Welcome back to The Breakfast, a very interesting conversation on human trafficking there. And we move to other things this morning. One of the one of my favorite segments on The Breakfast is where we talk about things that happened today in history. The 17th of November, uh, 2020, we take this back a couple of years ago. It's in 1993, where I would you know describe this as the start of a very dark five years in Nigeria's history, and of course, with regards to uh, civil rights and a lot more of the things that totally went away. If you remember, it was the era where there was something called the Abacha Stove. Uh, on the 17th of November in 1993 was the day when there was a bloodless military coup um, that ousted interim president Ernest Chonekon. He had been, an, uh, of course, a uh, president for only a few months, I believe, from the 20, uh, 26th of August, uh, 1993, until the 17th of November, 1993, when he was ousted by uh, Sani Abacha, who claimed that the government was stagnant and uh, didn't seem to be going anywhere. He, uh, of course, uh, came from being... Uh, the uh, chief of defense staff uh, into the bloodless military coup. Uh, some other things that happened in that period was, of course, uh, Sania Bacha declaring a or issuing a decree that placed his government above the courts and gave himself power to detain someone uh, for at most uh, um, at least three months without any uh, consequences uh, to the government. It was, of course, a very, very interesting five years in Nigeria's history. Some parts of it that I would never forget, and it's something that we had spoken about a few uh, days ago was uh, Ken Sarawiwa. But some other thing that a lot of people have n maybe forgotten was the person, a person called uh, uh, Oladipo Dia back then, uh, who eventually was uh, sentenced to death. And I think it was one of the persons that was saved by the outcomes of June 8th, 1998. Uh, General Oladipo Dia was eventually uh, pardoned by Abdul Salami Abu Bakr. But once again, today, uh, was the start of that long five years in Nigeria's history. Do you remember um, a lot of that time and where you were? And how all I know is that when I was a child, all I could hear was, Abacha is wicked. Abacha is <laughs> wicked. He's killing people. He's killing people. And then this sense of fear, you know, especially when my parents do their whispering. Uh, my parents whisper a lot at night, so they're whispering. And then the older we get, we go close to their door and listen on the needs to on. get what's going on. It, That's was, a, it, was, how, a it was a terrible time. Yeah, it even, was. Even it as was. kids, you could tell that there was something not wrong, or something not right then with the country. There are certain names that would never leave my, my memory, um, even as I've grown older. Um, Ishaya Bami, Sergeant Rogers, uh, Al Mustafa. Um, these were Kudrat Abiola. There was there's a couple of names that in that era uh, made headlines, but never for good reasons. And you know, there's people who would argue that oh, you know, there were some economic gains that Nigeria was able to you know to gather back then. In, in we're in, still in the recovering time. all the loot from Abacha era, so I, I don't know what the gains are. And I, I, another thing that in, uh, intrigued me was the story around his debt. There were so many conspiracy theories, even till date. I don't think it has been confirmed really How what exactly? killed um, Abacha. That was he really poisoned? Did he die from health complication? There's still this. Um, secrecy around it. Same and then there, 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 there was the famous one that he died in a heron. He died among women, plenty of women. Um, information says it's two, some say it's three, some say no, he did not die. You know, this sense, uh, people are saying they're still trying to create an enigma from somebody whose time was, you know, not, it's almost like a blight in the history of Nigeria. But there are still people today who are trying to shift history some sort, uh, in some uh, ways. And then you, you, you hear today, money has been discovered. There is still more to be discovered. And discovered. you wonder, was it all about looting the country's resources in the time that he was, pres um, he was a dictator? So in five years, he was able to loot the amount of money that we're still recovering. How many years down the line? Over 20 years down the line, we're still recovering money. It's mind-blowing. 
it's it's it's, it's yeah, that's the part that I remember, and I, I was like, okay. And then the monies that are recovered, do we get details of what is done with it? We hear in the news from time to time that okay, uh, this is going to be done, this is going to be done. Follow up is a nightmare in this country. We have such transient attention span that one thing comes, and then when we talk about oh, we must deal with this now, we must deal. Give us one week, two weeks, and then something that's else comes, long, and then we lot. move on. So it's uh, I, I I don't know. It's it's an interesting time in our history. Until date, we still talk about it, um, but I doubt we really learned anything from those times. Not very much. Um, but of course, uh, the things that we, we felt as a people then, I don't think we would ever be able to you know, leave those memories behind. It would always sting. I remember very well. It was a time when we as kids used to go to um, a sawdust factory back then to gather sawdust because that, that was what civil servants were left with to cook. Um, they they stuff, in, stuff it into some makeshift stove and then they use it to, to cook because there was no diesel. You couldn't afford a lot of all those things and it was nicknamed the Abacha stove. Um, but that was the reality of a lot of Nigerians back then. Even for those who were, you know, s seemingly employed. So you can now imagine what those who didn't even have jobs were having to deal with. The, the 8th of June in 1998, um, I remember very, very well when the stories started to leak or the stories started to, of course, to drop here and there that um, General Sanya Bacha had uh, passed. Um, so once again... This is um, our um, major story, or one of our major stories this morning. Uh, 17th of November in 1993, uh, General Sanya Bacha, in a bloodless coup, took over power from Ernest Shuneko. All right. Also today in history, um, the news came out on March 13, actually, but they said they traced this to November 7, uh, the COVID-19 um, patient zero. It's still a controversial issue, but the... South China Morning Post reported on March 13th this year that they were able to um, unravel details of uh, patient zero, who they say is a 55-year-old man in Wuhan, um, who visited a wet market and came up with the virus. There is uh, contention over that even now because there are some cases um, in late December that could not be traced to this uh, particular um, case that we have. Uh, let me take you back a bit, a, a little bit of a background to this story. Um, like I said, it was reported on March 13, 2020, as an exclusive of the South China Morning Post. They said they got um, um, a first-hand view of some government documents. Now, interviews with whistleblowers from the medical community suggest that Chinese doctors only realized that they were facing a, a pandemic in late of December. At the time, authorities suspected the virus stemmed from a market, a wet market in the city. However, it is not clear that early it, that it is now a pandemic. It was not clear as at the time they were uh, saying all of this that it was uh, a pandemic. Again, I need to reiterate that there is controversy around this. Uh, doctors are not certain that the 55-year-old that was identified in Wuhan is actually patient zero. Okay, that's the part that, it's, uh, that we're <laughs> referring to as today in history. But an update today. As of yesterday, we got another information that we now have a vaccine that is almost 95% sure effective in you know uh, dealing protecting you from COVID-19 that was less than a week after Pfizer came up with the 90% sure and this one from what I saw um, in the uh, in the news um, it doesn't require as cold a temperature as that of Pfizer in order to was, preserve it and that. transport it. You know, there, there is a difference. You can actually transport it and it will last um, a little longer. This one is coming from U.S. Bio, uh, biotech firm Moderna. 
uh, they are saying that they have a vaccine. So uh, it doesn't still mean that we should relax our guard. There is still social distancing. There is still wearing a face mask. There is still hand sanitizing until we ha don't have access to it yet. But that is some cherry news on the COVID-19. And front. hopefully when we find a vaccine that is 100% effective, we don't have uh, higher fall prices again. We don't want to buy four or 200 naira litre because we <laughs> found a 100% uh, effective vaccine. Yeah, yeah because, because, that, because there is a vaccine now, there is a spike. That was what the minister that was telling us that there is a spike um, in the price of petrol and that is why we are having a spike. Deregulation is not an easy uh, chore according to him. So uh, we'll continue to see fluctuation in prices. Uh, we might it never goes down though. Um, when, when, you, when you talk of fluctu fluctuation, you expect that it goes up and there's a time it drops. Down, but you it's know. been going up, up, yeah. all. Yeah, the uptick yeah. is it's not good at all. But um, like I say, and he looks at me in some sort of way, we cannot kill hope no matter what you do. That is the one thing that we must keep alive. It is the fire that will continue to ignite in us the desire to speak truth to power and ensure that you know, we don't stay silent on issues that affect all of us, and that is one of it. We need to get access to the vaccine, but we haven't gotten access yet. So please do what you need to do. Protect yourself. Stay safe. All the time. And um, if you can, just stay home. <laughs> stay home if you can. If you can, <laughs> stay home. So once With again, the you know, <laughs> these are two discussions this morning on what happened on the 17th of November. Um, of course, in 1993, was Ernest uh, Shunekon, who was uh, uh, taken out of power by General Sani Abacha. If you remember also, if you walk back a uh, backwards a little bit, General Ibrahim Babangida had just annulled the June 12 election and then handed over to interim president um, Ernest Shunekon, who only was president for a few months before that happened on the 17th of November. That was one of, of the November. shortest presidents in um, this country. Yeah. And, and one of the reasons Ab Abacha gave in his announcement was that he was incompetent uh, to transit to a democratic rule. Yes. So they have to send him away so that they can do what they need to do. It's, <laughs> I, I don't know. Nah, and of course, uh, hello. Just, Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.